Many pastors have gained significant attention in the media and public discourse. In this video, I'll highlight a few examples of pastors who gained fame for the wrong reasons. Creflo Dollar was arrested on charges he punched and choked his teenage daughter. The altercation actually stems from an argument mm -hmm. over the 15-year-old attending a party. He was arrested early Friday. Now to that scandal that brought down a Christian TV empire 30 years later, 2020 has a special look at the televangelist Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Amy here with that story. And Amy also took a look at what Jim Baker's doing now. He was sentenced to 45. He only served five, and so he is out, and now he is back in front of the cameras. A federal jury has convicted evangelist Tony Alamo in a sex scandal that rocked a conservative Arkansas community. On Friday, the former street preacher who built a multi-million dollar ministry became a convicted sex offender. Several pastors have become infamous for misusing church funds or engaging in financial misconduct and sexual misconduct. This include cases of drug and sexual abuse, personal spending using church donation and promoting the prosperity gospel teaching to enrich themselves at the expense of their followers' financial well-being. Pastor is in jail, accused of taking advantage of his position in the church. Police say Nicholas Kelly had a sexual relationship with a 14-year-old girl. Yeah, they say he even confessed to the other pastors at the church. Developing now, a well-known local faith leader has been arrested again, this time on drug charges. The Reverend George P. Lee III is facing charges for buying, manufacturing, or distributing marijuana, as well as possession of illegal mushrooms, MDMA, THC oil. He is a senior pastor of St. John the Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress, located in Savannah. Lee was previously arrested for DUI back in 2018. Jim Baker was a prominent televangelist who co-hosted the PTL Club. In 1987, he was convicted of fraud and conspiracy charges relating to misappropriation of funds and accounting irregularities in his ministry. He served time in prison for these offenses. Jim Baker was found guilty on all 24 counts of wire and mail fraud and conspiracy. Ted Haggard was the founding pastor of New Life Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. In 2006, he faced a scandal involving allegations of drug use and sexual misconduct with a male escort. The controversy led to his resignation from the church. Eddie Long was a prominent bishop and senior pastor of Newburgh Missionary Baptist Church. In 2010, he faced allegations of sexual misconduct with young male members of his congregation. He eventually settled the lawsuit out of court, but the accusation tarnished his reputation. There have been allegations and attacks made on me. I have never in my life portrayed myself as a perfect man. Todd Bentley was a Canadian evangelist who became known for his involvement in Lakeland Revival in 2008. However, his ministry came under scrutiny due to allegations of inappropriate relationships with women and financial misconduct. Peter Popoff was a televangelist known for his faith healing claims and extravagant TV shows. In the late 1980s, it was revealed that he was using hidden earpiece to receive information about audience members, undermining the legitimacy of his supposed healings. Robert Tilton was a televangelist who faced controversy in the early 1990s when it was discovered that his ministry was involved in financial exploitation, including allegations of male fraud. Marjo Gartner was a child evangelist who gained fame in the late 1940s and 1950s. However, he later revealed that he had been manipulated and exploited by his parents and others in the evangelistic world for financial gain. Tony Alamo was an evangelist who founded the controversial Tony Alamo Christian Ministries. He was known for his aggressive controlling behavior. He faced multiple legal issues including tax evasion and child abuse allegations. He was convicted in 2009 of taking young girls across the state lines for a sexual purpose and was sentenced to 175 years in prison. Tony Alamo, he is an evangelist. At this hour, state and federal investigators are combing his church compound and neighboring homes for evidence, and they're also interviewing children. All of this is taking place just outside of Texarkana, Arkansas, at the Tony Alamo Christian Ministries. 74-year-old evangelist Tony Alamo is facing a 10-count federal indictment that he took young girls across state lines for And if convicted, he could spend the rest of his life behind bars. Thursday, an 18-year-old girl told jurors that Alamo married her when she was only eight years old 
and began having sex with her a year later when she was in the third grade. George Rickers was a Baptist minister and anti-gay activist. He co-founded the Family Research Council, an organization known for opposing LGBTQ rights. In 2010, he faced scandal when it was revealed that he had hired a male escort for a European vacation. This incident led to questions about his public stance on homosexuality. Marcus Lamb is a tele-evangelist who co-founded the Daystar Television Network. In 2010, he publicly admitted to having an extramarital affair, which led to significant controversy and scrutiny of his personal life and ministry. Douglas Goodman was a South African pastor who gained popularity in the early 2000s. In 2004, he was convicted of assault with intent to cause grievous bodily harm for beating a congregant during a prayer session, which was recorded on video and widely circulated. Jeronima Aquila was a megachurch pastor in Virginia. In 2014, he was convicted of sexually assaulting two underage girls when he was a youth pastor in Texas during the 1990s. Creflo Dollar became well known for preaching the prosperity gospel and for the famous campaign of raising $25 million to buy a private jet. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. He has been criticized by many for living a lavish lifestyle. Along with owning a jet, he also owns two Rolls Royce and two high-end luxury homes amounting to about $5.7 million. Creflo Dollar was among six other preachers who was subject to a 2007 investigation led by United States Senator Chuck Crasley. Creflo Dollar was asked to disclose financial information about donations collected to see if he had made any personal profits for himself. A date was given for the information to be submitted, however Creflo Dollar and three others did not cooperate. The investigation ended in 2011 without any charges. Over the years, Creflo Dollar has written books and made video recording urging persons to pay tithe in the church. However, in July 2022, he stated publicly that his views on tithing was wrong. He said that he has misled a lot of people and that it is not biblical for persons to tithe, but that it is up to individuals to give according to their heart and ability. Creflo Dollar is one of the leading advocates of prosperity gospel. He teaches that financial wealth is a reward for serving God. Benny Hinn is well known and famous as a televangelist so-called faith healer. He gained significant prominence through his evangelistic crusades, which were broadcasted on television networks around the world. He became particularly famous for his fake faith healing events where he would claim to have the power to heal people through the Holy Ghost. These events attracted large crowds and were broadcasted on television, reaching millions of viewers. Benny Hinn faced both criticisms and controversy, with many questioning the authenticity of his healings and his beliefs of the scriptures. For decades, Benny Hinn was one of the most prominent proponents of the prosperity gospel, a theology that claims financial prosperity, physical healing, and success are guaranteed to those who have enough faith and donate generously to religious causes. This belief system attracted a massive following. In 2022, Benny Hinn publicly apologized and repented for his years of preaching the prosperity gospel, a controversial doctrine that has been widely criticized for its focus on material wealth and financial gain. This unexpected confession took place during a revival event where Hinn chose to address his false teachings and seek reconciliation with those who were hurt by his teachings. He acknowledged that he had preached a false gospel, one that placed an excessive emphasis on material wealth and personal prosperity. His teachings caused many to believe a lie, investing their faith and finances in search of a better life. Kenneth Copeland One of the primary reasons for Copeland's controversial fame is his association with the prosperity gospel, also known as the Word of Faith movement. This theological belief suggests that faith and positive confession can lead to financial success and physical well-being. Many argue that this teaching is manipulative and exploits people's desire for wealth and health. Copeland has been involved in significant fundraising efforts to support his ministry. Some critics have raised concerns about the transparency of his financial dealings and the use of donations for personal gain. Over the years, Copeland have made various controversial statements regarding his wealth, so-called healing, and other theological matters. Look at this house. Oh, look at how we're blessed. We just have everything. We've never asked God for anything that we didn't receive. We're just so blessed. He's so good to us. We named it, claimed it, blabbed it, grabbed it, and we have it. We do have it. <laughs> we're the one with the airplane. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Airplane, za, za. Some of these statements have sparked criticisms and public debates. Kenneth Copeland and his ministry have faced legal scrutiny at times, including inquiries into financial practices and allegations of tax evasion. Though he has not been convicted, such issues have added to the controversy surrounding him. Copeland controversial teachings and actions have garnered media attention, both from religious and secular outlets, which have further contributed to his fame. During the early stages of the pandemic, Kenneth Copeland faced criticism for downplaying the severity of the virus and making statements that some consider to be misleading or irresponsible. For example, he suggests that the virus could be cured through faith, prayer, and continued attendance at religious gatherings. In one of his sermon, Kenneth Copeland so-called summoned the wind of God to destroy the virus before blowing at the camera. He said, I blew the wind of God on you. You are destroyed forever and you will never be back. Thank you, God. Let it happen. Cause it to happen. On you. On you. You are destroyed forever. You are, you are destroyed, destroyed forever. forever. And you will never be back. And you will never, never be back. His remarks were met with scrutiny and backlash from the public, medical professionals, and some religious leaders who emphasized that he blasphemed and that he needs to understand the importance of following public health guidelines, social distancing, and taking appropriate precautions to limit the spread of the virus. It is well known that certain pastors have been misusing their authority within their congregation, resulting in a toxic environment that harms emotional and psychological well-being of their followers. This may include controlling behavior, manipulation, and fostering a culture of fear and dependency. Some pastors also align themselves too closely with political figures or parties. They are perceived as using their platform for personal gain and political influence rather than focusing on spiritual matters and the need of their congregation. They actively seek celebrity status and fame rather than humbly serving God and teaching the true gospel. This pursuit of fame leads to the focus on self-promotion and personal image. When pastors walk down this road, they become too powerful and they shy away from accountability within their congregation, which creates an environment where abuse of power and other unethical behaviors goes unchecked. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I do pray that we all continue in striving to please God. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching.